this is key. Like if you get this right, it's going to make your life so much easier. So talk to us a little bit about what the weaknesses that you've seen um, in project sponsorship selection and, and kind of the, I don't know, the, the slushy way that it's been done until you get some structure to it, right, that you would provide. What can people learn okay. and, and apply? So I think the first thing is, and I, and I know this upsets a lot of project managers, but they are not the most important person on the project. The project sponsor is. The project sponsor is ultimately responsible for the success or failure of the project. Now, you want a perfect partnership, absolutely. You want a great project manager with a great project sponsor. Now, there's the problem. I come from the generation of the accidental project manager. Hmm. I had no idea what I was doing and I managed to survive. We're in the age of the accidental project sponsor right now. And I'm going to give you, know, I'm going to teach you everything that you and your you know, listeners need to know about project sponsorship in three numbers. And the numbers are 85, 83, and 100. Simple. I did some research for a book on project sponsorship. And we asked a large number of companies around the world, do you have project sponsors? We had a very wide definition of what that means. 85% who are doing projects said, yes, we do. You worry about the 15%, but hey, 85%, not a bad number. Then we asked, what do you do to support, train, develop, guide, mentor your project sponsors? And 83% of the organization said absolutely nothing. We just think because they're great guys um, that they can just do it. And then the killer is we asked the last question 100%, and 100% and no, it wasn't 100%, it was 99.5. But you know, 100 is a great number to remember. Everybody said it was really important to have a good project sponsor in order to deliver project success. And that is the state of project sponsorship right now. We're in the age of accidental project sponsors. And it's, you know, we can do two things. We can just live with wastage for the next 20 years and hope people move through the ranks who know what the hell they're talking about. Or we can actually do something. And I love working with companies who want to do something about this. Okay. Let's dig into it even more. Say you're a new project manager. Say you're in charge of a, a CubeSat project at a university. You've got a bunch of graduate students in that, and the, but you've got to go up to the higher ups and get funding resources, right? That kind of thing. What, what, how should you go about this? I think you need to build a relationship with your sponsor. And I, I recommend three things to people. So, you know, when, you know, when you meet your sponsor for the very first time, understand them, you know, know as much as you can about them, you know, get, you know, find out about them. And it doesn't mean, you know, hire a private detective to get, you know, embarrassing photos that you can use to blackmail them in the future. It means they must have worked on other projects, hopefully in the past. So go and talk to that project manager and find out what their communication style is, find out what their needs are, find out what their experience is. So now you know what you're dealing with. And then you need to find out what their communication styles are like. What do they expect from you? You know, are they a quick bullet point update or are they sit in my office at three o'clock on a Friday for four hours? You know, what kind of person are they? And then finally, the third thing is, you know, when you talk to them about the project, um, you have very open questions. Don't talk about deadlines and budgets and stuff like that to start with. Talk about hopes and fears, open questions. You know, what do you hope this project will deliver? And what are your worries? Because then you're going to really be able to gauge, are they bought into this? Do they believe in it? Are they committed to this or are they just sitting on the per you know, periphery of it? In which case, you then have to do a whole series of uh, uh, kind of tactical uh, activities, which is kind of what the book is all about, mm -hmm. is how do you deal with the various types of sponsors, the ones who are involved, the ones that aren't involved, the ones that micromanage, the ones that just don't want to have anything to do with the project. There's a whole bunch out there. But it is, you know, the more you know about your sponsors, the better you can deal with them. Okay. And you talk about reporting in the book. Uh, you talk mm -hmm. about like... It folks will go and write up huge in-depth in reports and, and no one will ever read them. And it's kind of yeah. like, on the one hand, it's great that all that stuff's being documented. Uh, yeah. But on the other hand, nobody's reading it. So again, this communication style is so important, right? These preferences. Yeah, I mean, I, I love, you know, one of my favorite moments when I do is like, you know, keynote presentations is, you know, I will say that reporting is not communicating. Mm. And you get the looks from the audience going, what, what are you on about? I mean, that's, that's the heart of my communicating. Well, you're wasting <laughs> your time. Because you're right. I mean, these days we have such brilliant tools and you can produce all these, you know, 16 page report, mm. every piece of data in it, beautifully formatted, graphs, diagrams, graphics, fonts. Oh, it's beautiful. And the fact you email it to everybody plus their best friend actually means you have report, you have communicated to probably nobody because it's too much. Mm. It's right information at the right time to the right person in the right way. I mean, you have to get all of those four right. Otherwise, you will fail. More engineers are not going to solve your problem. It's not a technical problem in that sense. It's a process problem. And the time to fix your processes was 20 months ago. And the second best time is today. 
This is Jason Kanigan, the president of Cold Star Technologies and the host of this podcast, The Cold Star Project, which is all about identifying and solving process problems for space companies, because that's what we do. And you can hear the entirety of this episode by following the link in the comment below.